Welcome to RV Talk Radio. Here we talk about RV living, RV lifestyles, and RV travel. We also celebrate the RV lifestyle that gives us the chance to do outdoor activities that we couldn't do in a normal lifestyle. So thanks for joining us. Grab yourself a cup of coffee, a cup of tea, and let's talk about RVs. Well, hello everybody. This is Rob from RV Talk Radio. This is episode 76. And yeah, we took a week off because of the holidays. It's now a new year, 2017. And I want to thank you so much for listening. And today, we're going to talk about RV channels and blogs behind the scenes, what they don't talk about. And I want to kind of remind you that this is, we're staying neutral. We make these videos too. And we just want to talk about the realities that go on behind the scenes and what you see on these videos and these uh, even podcasts. So let's get on it. Let's uh, change gears here and let's talk about it. Well, before we all go nuts here and start sending nasty notes and all that thing, I want to remind everybody this is a show for talking about RV lifestyles and living. And so I want to remind you that Sherry and I are RVers. We live in our RV full time and uh, we are not traveling as much as we'd like to, but uh, we are definitely pro RV. So <laughs> don't get this show wrong. We just want to talk about the facts of what goes on behind the scenes. And the reason we're concerned about this is uh, there's shows out there that educate people about RVs and tips and tricks and stuff like that. And those are awesome. And then occasionally we come across these shows that tell you how awesome the lifestyle is and you need to give up everything and become a minimal minimalist sorry <laughs> i'm gonna leave this in just because of the humor anyway um and uh they sit there and say you gotta do this you gotta sell everything you gotta get rid of all your stuff you've got to join the rv world and i uh, beg to differ and in, in, in that kind of uh um selling you might say uh I think I'd love to see lots of people doing this, and it's a wonderful lifestyle. However, it's so different for every single individual. And so this is not to sell you that you have to become an RVer. This is a way to maybe, uh, we want to make sure you integrate uh, if you can, or not even do it at all. It's neat to see channels out there that People watch because they know they're never become an RVer or won't be able to travel and can enjoy the, the presentation that that channel or blog's giving to allow you to enjoy the lifestyle without actually doing it. And that's what I call a wonderful channel. And then there's others that uh, really uh, do great jobs at showing uh, how-tos and how to fix things and, and problems you may have in your RV while traveling or just parked. And then there's others, we don't know what the heck they're doing. They're just out there trying to like live the free world, kind of like gypsies. And there's, you know, and then there's these ones, there's like, you got to just come out here and join the RV freedom. And, and I get worried about that because it'll get you all pumped out. And you see the videos and the shows that we do, and you think that's what it's like. And that's not necessarily true. So what I want to talk about on this show is behind the scenes, the things you don't hear about, the things you see, and I will talk pretty much about Sherry and I's experience about uh, what we do with our channel, but there's other people we've met or seen with their channels and do documentation, and I got to tell you, it's not as glamorous as it sounds. So I want to um, uh, just make sure that everybody understands this is a debate, also a clarification of this is a real lifestyle and there is a negative side to it and there's things that you do in the RV lifestyle that you wouldn't necessarily do in an apartment or a house. And so I want it to be clear that um, that it's not all peaches and cream. So let's get started. Well, here we are, Rob and Sherry, we're in the RV park. And Sherry is not here. So what's Sherry doing? 
Well, Sherry is over at the laundromat. Why? Because we don't have a washer and dryer in our RV. And by the way, um, uh, we used to have an, R uh, an RV with a washer-dryer combo, and Sherry just despises the darn thing because your, your clothes comes out so wrinkly. And she just and so when we bought this rig, I said I put one in. She goes, "No way." So uh, anyway, there is one. One of the first things we need to talk about is is uh, you don't you know if you have an apartment or a house uh, or renting a house, a lot of times you have a washer and dryer already. And uh, in an RV, you're going to end up using laundry mats. Or the RV park usually has a laundry mat. And, uh, it, you know, the cost can vary between, you know, a dollar to three dollars a machine. And uh, so, yeah, you know, usually it's like ten to twelve dollars that we spend to do laundry. And so right there, right off the bat, uh, if you don't mind laundry mats and things like that, um, you just got to put that into your schedule that you need to spend half a day of you know going through the site you know cycle of washing your you know washing clothes and stuff and you will be using machines that other people have been using too and lord knows uh, if you're near a beach they're you know going to be sandy clothes or maybe someone put a rug in that had a you know dog sleeps in and stuff and so you know uh, the drawback is you know the fact that it's not yours and so uh you can only hope that they have really good machines and they're rinsed out well and and uh you know, it's just the reality of traveling. And so there's one of the main things I want to bring up right there is uh, laundry and uh, taking care of your, uh, and, and and let's keep with the washing thing. You can't necessarily go to the RV park and crack open uh, the, uh, the hose and start washing your car or washing your own rig or stuff because uh, actually they, in some places they're, they want you to be lenient on water. Two is they don't want you washing your rigs. They'll, uh, you'll allow uh, professionals come in that have special water tanks uh, on their rigs that uh, uh, isn't drawing from their systems. And so there's another freedom that you kind of lose of uh, um, if you're going to wash your rig or something like that, you'll have to go to a facility and, uh, for your car or, or truck. And if it's your RV, you can't necessarily have it done you can't do it yourself, but can probably have a professional come in and you'd be dropping about 120 to 175 dollars just for a wash. That doesn't include a, a wax. And so, in depending where you're at, you definitely want to take care of your rig. So, you know, you'll be dropping if you did a full wash and wax, you're looking at 300 dollars or better, probably. So, there's another thing you need to know about behind the scenes, but the biggest part about this whole theme on this show is we all have channels we like to watch and I'm not going to point out any you know, particular ones. Uh, I've thinned ours out a lot. I tend to stay with just the ones that everybody knows uh, because it just gets old after a while. And um, the funny thing is you only really see, uh, for those who are telling their daily story, uh, just, you know, 10 minutes of their life. And uh, other shows are just doing a presentation on a particular product or a how-to video. And so that's not really talking about their lives as they are trying to help you. And that's great. <clears throat> RV channel is, is uh, RV travel is a good one for that. And RV education and RV geeks are really good about RV tips. So they're not really telling their story. But there's other channels that are people watch on a daily basis uh, that... Um, really share <laughs> some personal stuff <laughs> and it's like oh my goodness uh, Sherry and I couldn't do it it's, I mean, it's probably just our age thing it's, um, uh, but you know the younger folks are a little more comfortable with it I guess and uh, we're literally you know go through really sensitive things to medical things to crying online and and uh, uh, and People enjoy that, and their channels do well. So, <laughs> it's just for Sherry and I, we tend to want to make videos that are entertaining, and we're trying to not always do the same thing everybody else is doing. Like when winter comes, 
every year there must be 20 videos on winterizing your RV, which we did too. We did videos on that, and I'm not going to go back and do them again. So there's a little secret about, and for those of you who actually listen to our full podcast, the secret of 2017 with RV Travel Buddy and RV Travel Quest is we're introducing Muppets. And so, uh, uh, like again, we're doing a show that wants to be a little different. We'll still talk about all the things with RVing, but we just want to have some fun. So our show, we don't want to be like everybody else. So <laughs> that's just how it is. And uh, uh, so, yeah, don't be surprised when you start seeing the Muppets. Uh, we've actually introduced Grandma, and we've and uh, Grandpa's on the way, and there's going to be some other ones coming in, but. Um, we actually have a studio being assembled and much more green screen stuff being done. And so I, 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 in earlier shows, we've indicated that that was a goal of ours and we're working towards that goal. So not a whole lot of videos are coming out because there's this big transition of how we're going to do our videos. And we're, we're really excited. But anyway, we've given a little taste of what's coming up. And some of it's silly, some of it's fun. But they're actually still talking and point out the lifestyle of RVing. Uh, so we're going to bring it out in a different way uh, just to make it kind of fun. So, But yeah, behind the scenes, oh my goodness, uh, life is not what it seems. Sherry and I, we talk about this a lot because we'll see a show and we'll say, kind of evaluate like how we felt about it. Um, one of the things I've noticed the most is if you're RVing and stay in one place, and a lot of people do that, even snowbirds, they'll, they'll travel, go to one place and stay there for five months. It wasn't until Sherry and I started holding still that we're actually starting to feel like, I don't know, um, that we're living in a cave. <laughs> I guess that's the best way to, uh, everything feels small. And it's because um, when you're traveling, you're always pumped up on the new places you're going. And as soon as you get there, you want to go check out all the different places, the uh, the sights and, and scenes of that area. But when you go in an RV and go to one spot and stay in one spot, to me and Sherry, we feel the agony of being in a small rig which is not a small rig we actually have the 3625 montana uh so it's quite roomy but and we have a dog and cat and we start feeling the, the sensation of missing having an apartment or a house uh, because of the space and um, you don't feel so confined and so but when we're traveling you don't feel that at all so if you're moving from place to place you don't focus so much on your uh, where you're living as, as you are traveling. I think the biggest shocker I get when I watch some of these uh, channels, when I try to watch them, <clears throat> is behind the scenes, we'll see these folks, they'll say, wow, we pulled off on the side of the road. We were living in a truck stop. We uh, spent the afternoon in a park and ride. And... and <laughs> I just want to write back in their comments saying, you're, you're <laughs> telling us you're living in truck stops all the time. And I first thing I want to do is turn to my wife and say, I apologize if I ever have to make you live in truck stops. Um, now, if I was you know financially wiped out and all that stuff, we may have to live in trucks, we may have to live in a car, who knows. But uh, at this day and age, uh, my biggest shock is... <laughs> is I I want to provide my my wife or partner or whoever you're with with you know a nice accommodations and and so uh, when you're at these truck stops especially truck stops you got the engines running all night long and truckers aren't necessarily the most friendly people to RVers uh, not necessarily all the time and and. Uh, you know, and then you got the Walmarts and all these other places, is they're parking lots, people. You're living in a parking lot. And, you know, you get these, oh, we got this great place. We swung in and spent the night at Walmart. Well, good for you. <laughs> you made it into a parking lot. <laughs> and, uh, 
And yeah, uh, you know, those are for while you're traveling, having, if you're going a long distance, it's nice to have these places to pull out. And it's also really nice not to have to spend 30, 40 bucks because, you know, you'll come in at night, you spend the night, get up and early and leave it good in the morning. It doesn't feel like you're getting your money's worth uh, spending that kind. So yeah, it's really nice to have those places that overnight. But the bottom line is they're parking lots, people. <laughs> <laughs> and so it's nothing glamorous about it and and it's strangers and there's prowlers because obviously people want to take advantage of you know that you're coming and going and boy if you don't lock things up you could lose a few things P people are dumb and, and thieves aren't dumb they figure this stuff out and parking rides can be quite a uh, there's been some terrible stories about parking rides uh, well, not parking rides, but uh, rest stops. Uh, they can be a uh, interesting place to be. And I mean, if you're just going there and going to use the restrooms and stuff, lock your stuff up. Uh, they get you pegged. <laughs> and so uh, there's the first thing. I, behind the scenes, people, that stuff's not as pretty as it looks. Um, and in some cases, I feel is not safe and could be dangerous. And so... Uh, you don't see that on the videos and and there's a lot of things that people don't tell you about from their shows and stuff but i know saying well i felt comfortable most of the time well there's a couple of times i didn't uh there's also places that sherry and i have gone where we drove around looked around going you know let's keep driving this doesn't feel good so anyway uh behind the scenes this stopping and living in parking lots and truck stops uh, rest areas, uh, not so glamorous people and really needs to be thought through carefully. And another thing that comes across that, um, nobody really talks about clearly because it's different for everybody. Now there's a lot of people that may have, um, uh, their husband or, or wife or had been in the military or, uh, some people when they retired have, and I'm going to talk about healthcare. <clears throat> so when you're young, uh, a lot of times, a lot of things don't necessarily happen when you have to go to the hospital or doctor very often. So this Obamacare or this uh, programs that they have now, the couple of drawbacks that are behind the scenes, and they don't really talk about it much. And, uh, um, a couple of folks did, but uh, it's still a big, first the cost went way up this year. And uh, so... This Obamacare tends to be in the state that you reside. So, for example, Sherry and I are from Washington, so we'd have to set up Obamacare there. And, man, the numbers, uh, first of all, cost was uh, just totally surprised us. Second is these deductibles that you got to have are just way out there from 6000 to 10000 per person. And it's like, really, you go to any kind of minor stuff and it, you're paying out of pocket. What's the use to having it? And of course, at our age, you know, you could have something major happen any time, and that's where it really would kick in. But also, when you get our age, you got a lot of smaller things you want to go in for, and even for colonoscopies and checkups and things like that when you get over 50. And uh, that was our reality of we can't do this yet. We're uh, in our 50s still. And so we got down to uh, Arizona. Sherry had a great business uh, offer for her. Uh, and we're near our grandkids. And so she took it and it got us not, you know, and it got us great insurance, great vision, great dental. Uh, maybe cost us 200 a month if we're lucky, you know, plus or minus 50 bucks. And is in great deductibles, the whole work. So you can't beat it. And that's, you know, all you guys know that when you're working on a corporation or a company that has a, a, a group insurance, it's a great deal. And even if you have to pay 200 or 300, it's a great deal. And so uh, that was our realities. And so now we uh, we have to kind of look at doing extended kind of RVing because the reality is uh, the older and anybody that's in our age and up knows that we got to be cautious and things could happen. And that's just how it is. And so Sherry and I got to wait till we're in our 60s. And people can relate to that where we can get Medicare and then maybe just get a um, supplemental insurance for 600 a month, 500 a month, whatever it costs. 
and then maybe we can hit the road full time again. And uh, that's reality. That's what's going on behind the scenes. Uh, people say, well, it's all great and fine and dandy, but ask those people, what are you really doing for medical? Now, there's some exceptions to the rule where some people have got jobs online that are actually providing uh, uh, insurance, and then there's others that have uh, uh, military insurance, VA stuff, and so that's great. And then there's others that are actually on the road that make so little income that they make get a good deal on their um, insurance because they make don't make that much a year and that's where Obamacare has uh, brought on a lot of new people because they're able to get uh, federal assisted assistance in paying for their health care. So big, big, big thing there. That's really big and, and a lot of youngins will say, well, it's not big, no big deal. We can afford it. Well, yeah, and I could have too back then too and I look back then, I would have done exactly what they're doing, Obamacare. And uh, uh, there's some other programs out there, but the bottom line, that's a big, big thing behind the scenes that uh, you need to think about. What are you going to do for health care? And if you leave your state, a lot of times anything major, you have to go back to your state. And so that's just how the new reality is of the health care. Let's hope this new regime we got for uh, uh, politics um, might change that back to kind of what it was before because when Sherry and I traveled before in 2006 we got health care and we paid like 500 a month and it was pretty decent health care and uh, so we thought we'd be close to that when we hit the road at 55 not even close it was just a shocker and so if you haven't addressed that you really need to is it boring yes is it something you really want to talk about no is it something that's a necessity yes especially when if you're getting older or you may have something that you you've had that needs to be uh, addressed all the time you got to have health care you know that so uh, that's all i'll say in that subject i could go a lot deeper into it but uh yeah uh, behind the scenes what are you going to do for health care? And what is some of these people that are doing these shows? Are they really being smart about their health care? And uh, that's really something you really need to ask yourself. I will never forget back in the days when my son and my daughter were just, you know, newborns and stuff. And Back then, we bought the latest VCR cameras, and uh, and I lived my life behind the lens of taking pictures of my kids. And and I'm grateful I did it, and I have hundreds of hours of uh, some precious photos of my kids, and some stuff is boring, too, a lot of it, <laughs> anyway. And uh, later on, as the kids got older, I got to a point of just like, you know what? I am just tired of being behind the lens and pointing this thing at my kids all the time. And I just want to, I'm going to just remember it in my head. I'm just, enough is enough. And so there's another thing that's going to happen. If you decide you're going to be an RVer and you're going to have a channel and a blog and you're going to make big money and um, selling books and, and telling your story and making videos. Um, I can tell you right now, uh, <laughs> it's hard. Second is it really gets old after a while too. Um, everywhere you go, you got to take cameras with you, and uh, and it can get expensive. Well, you can keep it cheap. I mean, you can actually do a lot with just the GoPro, and uh, they got cheaper versions of the GoPro now, so you can get one of those even cheaper. Um, but you know, later on, you start getting more particular about your shots, and you want to be able to zoom in on things. So pretty soon, you have you know four or five cameras, <laughs> and then pretty soon you start getting a little more finicky about your sound and audio. So you start buying wireless stuff and and lapel mics and covers and and extensions, and it just. Um, but the thing is, is um, pretty soon it's like you can't get out of the car with a without a bag around your shoulder and. And a camera by your side, and you're pointing it everywhere, and and some even some of your friends will say, "You're not going to record this, are you?" And uh, um, so the drawback of that is you got to realize, well, first of all, our cameras are not cheap. Two is uh, there's a lot of hours that go into making some of these shows, just like this podcast is. Uh, 
Uh, one is to get it recorded, and two, um, come up with you know the new ideas. And then once you record it, you can uh, convert it to an MP3, and then you have to uh, title it, and then you got to make a description, and then you got to make graphics, and then you got to post. You know, we make two versions of the show. We make a audio version for the podcast, and we make an audio version for video. Some some people like the video better, and it's just how it is. Now, if you see the numbers as far as viewers, there isn't a you know there's not as strong as a regular video. But some people would rather just listen to a podcast, click on it, and listen it through that channel. And so we, you know, no problem. It's, we can do that. So that's why we make the video version of this also. Uh, the podcast itself gets oh, 100 times more traffic than the video version. But uh, anyway, so just to let you know that um, th there's no glamour in sitting in an RV on a nice, beautiful day, and you've got to spend half the day editing. And uh, the more videos you do, and stuff, the more people start expecting it to be a little bit more uh, professional. And uh, uh, some people, you know, they enjoy the fact of you know you're making rough cuts, and they understand. But again, that gets old after a while. And if you really want your channel to grow, you got to start thinking about. Your, how you're editing, how you're doing your intros and outros, and and and, when to, and and eventually you also have to get to a point of going, you know what, I want to do what makes me happy and not try to keep making videos and make you, them happy all the time either. So you got to compromise. It's like you want to stay to your convictions at the same time if you really want your channel to grow. Uh, are you going to do things that you don't normally do uh, to, uh, you know, when you start looking at, uh, what your subjects are and which ones, uh, uh, which videos did better than the others. Pretty soon you realize you got to start making videos that you don't necessarily want to make. Um, but you need to, you need, to, if you're going to really get into your channel and stuff, you make it grow. You know, if you look at our programs and stuff, you'll see we're not one of those big hot shot uh, channels because we tend to do what we enjoy doing. And don't necessarily make the videos of controversy and uh, 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 <laughs> showing personal things that I, Sherry and I just can't do it. It's just uh, you don't need to know that we had a fight or you don't need to know that we uh, um, uh, had some hardships and that I had a bad day and I'm going to be in tears on my show in front of you. And, and there's others that can empower to them for those who can do that. But... Uh, I think uh, this is an entertainment channel that we try to do, and and we want to look at the humor of all this stuff, and uh, and you know educate people along the way too, and uh, we admire everybody that makes their stuff, uh, but yeah, um, the camera equipment and the editing and all that stuff is not glamorous at all, guys, and can be really frustrating, and. To, you know, trying to figure out what editing software you want to use, and then uh, you got to deal with the internet issues of trying to upload your videos. And if you're out in the middle of parking lots and stuff, you could, you know, what a 20 minute video could take hours to upload, which is just ridiculous. And it's like, what do you do during that time while you're sitting there in front of your laptop at a, a Starbucks trying to upload a video and, uh, now you're getting to places that don't even allow you to upload because they're getting wise to you. <laughs> and uh, it's, it's just crazy. And that's behind the scenes. That's the things you don't see. And uh, the tripods, the lights. Um, it's funny. I'll do a video and, I not, and I'll not light it as well as I want to because I don't want a whole bunch of lights up in our RV. And I don't have a lot of time. And, and sure and heck, the one person was like, well, well, couldn't see you very well. And it's like, Ugh. Okay, so I, I cut a corner a little bit, and so I pay the consequences with comments that are more worried about my lighting than the actual story. And so, uh, uh, and that's, I mean, after you, if you bring your quality up, then they actually expect to see it more. And I, I understand that too. So that's what I'm passing on to you behind the scenes. You see us all charming and happy and and uh, stuff, but, uh, you know, we could like, hey, we're going for a road trip, come along, and then I turn off the camera, and then the engine won't start. That's reality. <laughs> so you, we don't show that part. <laughs> um, 
And uh, yeah, so that's what this show is all about. It's trying to make sure that you realize that we're all doing shows and, and, this is, uh, and we are entertaining. And I don't care if you're an RV tr uh, uh, tips and repairs or how-to channels or whatever. Uh, you'll notice that their number one rule is to make them short and sweet. And that's what YouTube tells them they should do to make good videos. Just like our videos uh, with more of a story, they tell you to try not to break 10 minutes. And then we got, um, you'll see other channels that'll be playing little games with you, like the word of the week or something at the end of the show that they try to uh, entice you to watch the whole video. Because that's how a good video ranks is the more view time it gets, uh, the more popular it gets. And so... Uh, you may think these people being fun and, and charming on stuff, but what they're really doing is they, you know, they went to the video academy like all of us, and uh, they're really taking it serious and trying to make their videos um, uh, entertaining and pull you through uh, the whole video, um, and and might put like a little carrot, dangle a carrot at the end just to make you watch that whole thing, and uh, uh, you'll see little intros like. The car exploded, and then it goes into their uh, their intro, and, and what they're doing is they're trying to, uh, 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 I can't remember their terminology, but they're trying to entice you to watch the video, and uh, so yeah, and we do that too, uh, it's, uh, it depends on what we're doing, if we're doing a series, you'll see us do shows where we'll say, uh, mean, meantime, um, or meanwhile, before, or to, Prior to this video, blah, blah, blah. In this video, you see blah, blah, blah. And we tried to set you up to want to watch the whole video. And so, uh, yeah, that's just normal stuff. And uh, uh, it's hard and it gets cumbersome. And, 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 and your partner may not be into all this video and, and all that stuff. And they may not want to be in front of a camera and all that. And I don't know how many couples I've met that say, oh, my husband does all these shows. I try to stay in the background. I don't want to be seen. And uh, that's not unusual. And there's nothing wrong with that. And, but uh, you need to know that that's what's going on. And these cameras, you know, you'll, or you'll film something and realize you didn't have sound <laughs> or the wind was blasting too much. It really can be frustrating. So, yeah, think that over. Um, maybe if you travel and just do you know, just do photography and, and just just enjoy the and and don't live behind the lens all the time. And that's probably why we don't pump out as many videos. Is like I don't know how many times we've got in the car and say, let's not take the cameras. Let's just enjoy the day and remember it in our heads. And we say that a lot. And so, um, unfortunately, you know, there's a lot of things that we've done here in Arizona. We just didn't take cameras, or we did, and we said, you know what? Not today, sorry. And so that's just a reality. You got to live your life bef um, for yourselves and not for everyone else. Behind the scenes, uh, there's kind of something that bothers me and Sherry a lot, and it's our pets. And what I really get worried about is, uh, first of all, my pet hardly, very, you know, I just can't seem to get enough free time to let her run free somewhere and there's dog parks where you can run free but and there was fails to get in there and there's some aggressive dog in there and the other thing that kind of worries me is like we go to these places that have dog kennel kind of run free and how many hundreds and hundreds of dogs have done their business in those and then there's people that just don't take care of their pets because of you know finances or etc or they just don't care and don't have their vaccines and stuff and some really nasty things can happen to your pet so one of the things that behind the scenes that really bother me and Sherry is, is for Cinder, our chocolate lab, is one, giving her freedom, two, exposing her to too much of uh, places where pets have done their business, where she could get sick. And trust me, we've given Cinder every vaccine possible and we keep them up and we really watch her health. But, uh, you know, there's only so much you can do and I... And, our dog is constantly having to live on a leash and she's well trained and she does not have to be on one. But, and then the problem down here in Arizona is you don't want to let your pets run free in the desert because there's critters here that will kill them. <laughs> so up in the Northwest, we could, you know, let our dog romp through the woods easily and never have to worry about a rattlesnake or a scorpion or something like that. 
So that's something behind the scenes that really, if you got pets that are so used to freedom and, and a little RV, it can be kind of, it's not too bad for a little dog, but a bigger dog, uh, uh, I, I can tell sometimes it affects Cinder. Well, we just got to get her out of this RV and just let her go for a ride in the car and, and not have her leash on and try to find uh, somewhere where we can let her kind of roam a little bit and sniff and do her thing. And uh, so it's um, behind the scenes, you don't see that. And, and maybe other people don't feel that way about their animals and stuff. But uh, Cinder and our cat is a big part of our family. And so I got a cat that only knows the world of the RV. She can't run free, of course. And down here, you don't want to let a little dog or a little cat run free because um, there's uh, <laughs> owls and birds and, and prey around here. They'll take them out. And so, I don't know, I, I wanted to bring that up as, uh, if you're going to go into RVing, have you thought that over? Are you going to take a pet with you? How well is your pet? Um, I think smaller dogs are probably a little easier to maintain, and the fact that they don't feel so uh, confined as a bigger dog would. Um, maybe I'm wrong. I don't know. I, uh, but it. For me and Sherry, it feels like we have our pets a little bit too confined, and I also worry about where these pet parks where I'm taking Cinder. And um, the smaller they are, the more uh, disease or or, or um, uh, things that could make our dog sick, and uh, that a vaccine is not going to protect her from. So who knows? But yeah, that's something you want to consider behind the scenes here is how well will you pet, pet handle all this? I think the other thing that behind the scenes that don't doesn't get talked about enough, and it sounds like a lot of fun, and it's, and it's not, is buying what RV are you using? Well, making that choice is the tough part. But, you know, if you're going to buy a used or older RV, and I don't know how many times we'll see these people that buy these 20, 25-year-old RVs start traveling, and it breaks down, and they're shocked. It's like, are you kidding me? Why would you be shocked? <laughs> these, these rigs uh, um, are carrying big loads, and things are going to happen, and you better have a little bit, either enough money to... Be prepared that you're going to break down in the worst places. This is how it is. And uh, you're certainly not going to have any warranties or anything like that. You can get extended warranties for used rigs up to about 10 years, I believe. Could be more. However, uh, uh, and then towing is going to cost you a fortune because it's a big rig. And uh, sometimes just the simplest things can take you out in the worst places. And... You're talking about traveling across the United States and things, and you're in a 20, 25-year-old machine, and you're surprised that it broke down. Mm -hmm. <laughs> um, now, hey, if you're prepared for it, have a chunk of change, uh, emergency credit card, something like that, um, uh, no big deal. Others uh, will think, well, I get out there, people will send me money. <laughs> it's like... And they do. That's the silly thing is I, I don't want to laugh at that because it actually happens and people say, or, uh, uh, you know, uh, there's programs out there which are uh, um, Patreon and, and uh, fundraising things and, 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 there, and there's, I think, great purposes for that. But I also think there's, they're uh, used sometimes that that's the way that they're going to travel. And I guess that's all right if they're presenting you with a really good uh, program or a channel that you really enjoy watching. Then yes, you should be you know donating to them or or tipping them for uh, bringing you a great show that you enjoy every day or once a week. So you know, good stuff. But uh, uh, behind the scenes, your RV will break, and how well can you handle that? And um, if you know you're not much of a mechanic kind of person, then you need to, uh, uh, I can tell you that, like, for example, Sherry and I had to move our rig this, uh, this week. And so what a pain in the rear. I mean, you're going to put everything away, move it to another space just for another three months in a new location. 
and you know clean put everything away uh, put it back out again set it up thing, um, things don't fit the same as they did last time and uh, you spend the whole day trying to remember where you hit everything so you could move the RV and then you open up the sides again the whole works and then you get on the ground and put cover our tires and there was all these things we had to do I'm going oh, people don't see this that you know we're in our and and this is another thing I want to talk about is like if you stay long term in a RV park they tend to move you around to accommodate the different kinds of traffic again and now down Arizona right now this is a busy time so we were in one spot for about three months now we had to move to another spot which will be here for a few months and uh, if all goes well we'll be in another spot the rest of the year so we'll have to move again and so that's the bad part about you know you can't necessarily get an RV park where you can stay some places for six months in one spot and you may not want to do that, and and that's uh, like I told you, Sherry and I decided to hold still next to you know we're near our grandkids, and Sherry's got a great job where we're getting really good insurance. Uh, it's not the money as it is the insurance for us. So, and there's you know more to the story, and we'll share more of that as we go. And then uh, uh, so anyway, so behind the scenes, not that glamorous. Uh, you know, uh, we had to. Uh, uh, reset up the RV and uh, be inconvenienced and it's like it's not our RV park and it's not our space and so we have to follow their rules. Another thing I may not have told you about is we had a little swimming pool that we used for cinder during the hot weather. Well they got after me by you know we leave water in it and uh, so one of the problems that came up at night is the javelinas, skunks, all that stuff to pass through this desert place because we're right on the edge of the uh, uh, the wilderness here, um, the water attracted them for a place to get water. So she asked us uh, if we not keep our pool full. I'm not going to ref refill the pool every day, and I feel like it's wasting water. And she didn't care about wasting the water, but I do. It's like this is Arizona; water is more precious. And so we just quit using the pool for cinder because it. One is the RV park said no, even though it's not even their rules and regulations. Um, cause of the, you know, having exposed water outside to feed the wildlife. And, uh, but I understand it. But the thing is, the bottom line is this is not my property. Um, even if I had a, a park model, I'd still be on rented property and I have to follow their rules and regulations, even if they decide to change them. So, uh, you need to know that. And that's behind the scenes of things that happen around, uh, in RV parks. But the last thing I want to talk about, and I'm going to change gears here in a minute, is who you have to live with. The biggest thing that comes up in the uh, RV living is the fact is you're going to be living with strangers. <laughs> and you're like, oh no, it's an RV family, it's an RV group. Nope, <laughs> it's RV strangers. And so, because if you think everybody RVs the way you do, wrong just like i can't assume that you rv the way me and sherry do and so these rv parks have got some very interesting characters uh some are old timers some are young people some are uh, uh, <laughs> uh, sex offenders some could be uh just out of jail um and it, it's a mess of all kinds of people and you go oh that can't be true and all this. i'm like well i'm afraid that if you talk to rv park owners the truth is is they don't know that much about each person that comes into the rv park and some people like it that way they do it on purpose uh so some people are hiding from things and so maybe you know it could be a hundred people in an rv park and we're maybe just talking about one uh but um a lot of sex offenders have been known to also stay in rv parks uh, so, and then, uh, you know, and there's just some strange folks. So you just need to know that behind the scenes, uh, it's always good to try to go into a community. And if you go into a, a RV park that tends to be more expensive, tends to thin that kind of situation down. Uh, that's kind of sad, but at the same time, uh, typically folks that have a pretty good incomes and stuff like that, 
uh, are not running from the law or having any issues like that. Uh, there is exceptions, I do agree. Um, but in your higher end RV parks uh, tend to be less, less percentage of those kind of people. But your average RV park, um, you know, we got people that don't maintain their pets, or they may leave and their dog barks all night in their RV. Uh, we got folks that are kind of strange, will just sit outside their RV and stare at you all day. And one may be an uh, alcoholic and he's like, and I'm talking about real stories, I just can't tell you where. Uh, where that he, a person was drunk every day and would wander around and um, make you feel very uncomfortable. We had one guy walking around the RV park, casually talking to people, but he was in a t-shirt and underwear. Um, and apparently had too much to drink, but it was in the morning, like, really? <laughs> anyway, uh, you get folks with noisy motorcycles, they'll fire up a Harleys in the morning. Uh, people run, uh, fire up their RV and uh, think they have to warm up their diesel or something, and they haven't ran it in a couple of weeks. Uh, understandable, but you know, right next to your other rig, right? You may be right next to them, and you got the rumbling of a, a diesel engine running for an hour. Uh, some people have kids, uh, and if you're past the point of kids and don't have the patience for that anymore, even in a 55 community or better, I believe 10% of the population that go into those have to allow let normal people come in um, over 50, uh, under 55, whatever normal is. Sorry. But anyway, you need to know behind the scenes, was, there's some interesting situations. I know one place we went, Sherry and I are in a hot tub, and someone brings in their kids, and their kids jump into the middle of the hot tub and splash everybody in the face, and we're all like old adults, and didn't say a word, didn't care. We're all wiping our faces off, going, uh, great. <laughs> there goes our peace and quiet. Thanks for bringing your kids. Uh, kids have every right to be in there. Yes, I agree. But you should coach your kids. Do not jump in the middle of a hot tub. In the, there's a pool over there. Go jump all you want. But anyway, that's just how it goes. That's behind the scenes, the things you don't see. And uh, uh, it's uh, frustrating sometimes because you can move from one space and, and they say, oh, ah, well, that goes to a different spot. And they move you and you find out you got another weird neighbor. And so, uh, uh, and, and just because you got weird RV parks doesn't mean that when you're boondocking, weird things can't happen either. So uh, that can get really scary too. And people, uh, uh, you may run into people that are packing and, and, and out in the wilderness and you start telling yourself, what, you know, that guy could take me out here and probably nobody know it and uh, clean me out and and be laying de dead in the desert for a couple of days before you get found. <laughs> it's like, it could be pretty wild. So you need to think about where you're living and realize that no matter where you go, there's going to be places where you need to be cautious. And some of these RV parks, uh, as glamorous as they may sound, some really weird things happen here. And uh, uh, believe me, that's things you don't hear about. Um, but there's lots of stories, and as as I talk, and, and the more I talk, the more I think about other stories, and I just go on and on and bore you to death with that stuff, but uh, do realize RV parks have got some very interesting characters. And I would like to take a moment or two to identify one of our sponsors, which is corporate-owned uh, goodmusicradio.com, which is a new internet radio station. It's actually doing really well. It uh, plays classic hits from past and present. Um, good stuff. It has pop music. It has rock music. It has easy listening. And even some country. And uh, great stuff. It's been a great radio station. It's been growing steadily. And uh, uh, once again, it's called goodmusicradio.com. And if you actually go to that on your cell phone, there will be a link on there where it says uh, uh, get music app. And you can get uh, a free music app that just when you push it it'll go straight to our radio station it'll turn your cell phone right into a transistor radio like the old days anyway we've been very happy with it and we appreciate the positive uh, feedback we've gotten about the show and once again it's called goodmusicradio.com there is a link in the description and I uh, hope you get a chance to check it out uh, anyway so the other thing I wanted to talk about real quick is 
don't hesitate to contact us. Uh, once again, this show is to bring up conversation. If you every once in a while get somebody to just shoot some nasty note, and it's like, did you even listen to the show? We're neutral, and uh, uh, we enjoy our being. So uh, we just talk about things that don't get talked about. And so I'm not looking for comments of ridicule. I'm not doing that um, to you. I respect all RVers out there. <laughs> I'm just bringing out points that, of interest that people have talked about or don't even notice. And so <laughs> chill out. <laughs> but constructive feedback, your ideas, your experiences, those are the kind of things we want to hear about. And we can actually bring on the show and discuss more. And we'd really appreciate that. So please take the time to go to uh, rvtalkradio.com go to the contact page shoot us a note you can shoot a direct note to me and i'll get it uh, on my personally uh nobody else will see it at rob at rvtalkradio.com just email that um last but not least go to our uh, facebook pages we have one for rv uh, travel buddy and we have one for rv talk radio and uh, go to the little button at the top and shoot us a message and say hello and and tell us what's on your mind. <clears throat> uh, so we love your feedback. So please take the time to contact us. Uh, tell us uh, what you like, dislike. Um, but we ask you to be professional about it. We, um, when we see nice professional comments come in, we tend to respond and respect those much more than someone being very rude to us. And it's uh, very rare that that happens. But it happens. And it's like, really? Did you even listen to the show? Anyway, so we appreciate it. Please give us a holler. We'd love to hear from you. Well, our hour is just about up, which is amazing. <laughs> it's like, where does the time go? So much things I want to cover, and I just can't seem to do it all in the in one hour show. So we'll just move it on to the next show. But uh, I do want to point out uh, a big thank you for listening to the show and your feedback. But Please, when you're watching these channels and you're watching these videos, please understand that they're shows and they're entertainment. And I've talked about this before, but uh, you need to really ask yourself, okay, these people are all excited about living in a truck stop. Like, really? Do you want to live there? You need to really ask yourself if that's what you want to do and how you want to do that. And if you're going and you're, and you're getting ready to enter into the RV lifestyle, uh, we just want to make sure that reality is in front of you and you understand what you're getting into and you make the best choices that fit you and your family. Uh, so, and, and it comes also, you know, depending on what kind of rig you pick out, what kind of traveling you want to do, and maybe you don't even want to travel, you just want to use an RV to reduce your cost of living. Totally makes sense. And we support all of that. And so... Uh, even though we brought up subjects that might have seemed negative, uh, it's, you know, whether we're talking about living in an apartment or house, there's negative things there too. And, and some people may not realize if they're getting ready to buy a house for the first time, uh, how cumbersome that could be. <clears throat> so it's the same thing with RVing and the RV lifestyles, and it's different for everyone. So I hope you enjoyed the show. We really appreciate you listening. We really hope that someday, if you don't have an RV, that you get a chance to get one and you don't have to live in it full time to enjoy it. Use it for camping, hunting, extended travel, use it as a vacation home. Uh, there's so much you can do. And, and if you have a job where you're a contract worker and you have to go away from the family, maybe a more feasible way to use an RV instead of getting motel rooms for a month when you're doing contract work and still be in contact with the family. So anyway, you can see the RV is such a flexible tool and uh, I hope uh, you get a chance to enjoy it. So with that in mind, I want to thank you once again for listening. I'm Rob Scrimner from RV Talk Radio. Please be safe out there and hopefully get yourself an RV. Bye now. Thank you for listening to the video version of RV Talk Radio. Please click on the other links to see some of our other shows, and don't forget to subscribe. Once again, thanks for watching RV Talk Radio. Bye now.